Atul Gopal from Plugin India and welcome back to the Battery Talk series. Uh, we again have Abhay ji, last video you, we heard about his background and uh, today we are going to be hearing about what goes into the making of a battery pack. So this is what he has been doing for the last three years. So Abhay ji, welcome back and uh, please tell us, educate us about ki battery banti kaise, how does the battery get made. Battery pack is basically a cluster of cells or the, they are basic energy elements and they are integrated appropriately with certain objectives. So what are the objectives for a battery, making a battery pack? The first and foremost objective is it has to be safe, thing number one. Second objective is it has to be as long as possible or in terms of life, thing number two. And third objective is it has to do, do the job which is, it is supposed to be doing in the end application. So all these three together will basically make a battery pack out of a cluster of cells. Now when we say talk of safety, safety has got again two different things. One is the safety which is intrinsic to the cell and then the fallouts of our, that or repercussions or the complements which need to be done from the battery engineering perspective to ensure the complete safe operation of the battery pack. So it is safe. From aging, uh, from longevity of the cells, it comes that uh, there are ultimately it's a lithium ion battery cells which are NMC, LFP, uh, LMO, all those chemistries, they uniformly will have one rule that the cell will get abused because of temperature and then the cell will get abused because of the C rate and the cell will get abused because of the aging. Uh, can you talk about C rates because some of the viewers may not be knowing what C rate is. Yeah. So C rate is basically uh, uh, expression of the current which is taken out or into the battery as normalized to the its nominal capacity. For example, 100 ampere hour battery pack, if I drive it uh, at 150 ampere uh, current, then I will say it is 1.5 C. If I drive it by 50 ampere current, either charge or discharge, I will say it is 0.5 C. Yeah, so it is 1.44 kilowatt hour battery pack, it is 48 volt system, so it is 48 volt 30 ampere hour. So, if I charge the battery if uh, at uh, 15 amps, then it is 0.5 C. If we drive the battery, say 30 amps, it is 1 C. If we drive the battery at 45 amps, it is 1.5 C. So, basically the C rate, temperature are the abusing factors. So, how the mechanic, how could the complete uh, engineering aspect of the battery takes care of these, aspect, these uh, uh, abusing factors as minimal as possible with respect to impact so that the calendar life of the battery will increase in operation. So, uh, moment we talk of pack, we talk of two, two things. One is a basic cell and then the cell integration. So, like you see here, the battery packs uh, which uh, uh, power swap uh, comes up with is typically a 48 volt and 60 volt battery pack. These are for two wheeler applications. So, we have been uh, using pouch cells and that is what we thought of uh, sticking to. Uh, the reason for that is uh, like if you see this battery, right, it is uh, 1.4 kilowatt hour with pouch, you do not see any paralleling here. So, the single pouch is connected all in series, so that becomes easy for integration, okay. But then that has got uh, the scalability issue as well. Like uh, if I have to be, make a 60 ampere hour pack or 30 ampere hour pack, if I stick to a cylindrical cell which is worst case uh, today it goes around to 3.2 ampere hour, one has to go around 20, 30, 40 kind of things in parallel. But with pouch, I just need to go for 2, 3, 4. So this paralleling is uh, pretty avoided in pouch, thing number one. Pouch is that way stable from the thermal perspective because the surface area which is available for cooling is much higher than the cylindrical one. So it is actually a sort of uh, soft version of uh, prismatic one can say, okay. And still it is scalable to a level uh, which is tangible for going for any application. For example, this 30 ampere hour pouch, I can create uh, tangibly the battery packs as low as two wheelers, three wheelers, uh, two even bus platform by putting them in parallel, okay. But definitely the paralleling will not be to that extent as one has to do with the prisma, uh, with the cylindrical cells. So we thought of pouch, uh, we stick to, we said that pouch, but moment you say pouch, right, it's a pretty flimsy material. Unlike the cylindrical or prismatic, which has got a, a hard casing around it, so it's mechanically very well secured at the source level itself. But moment you say we want to handle a pouch, then a lot of work has to be done beyond thermal management for the mechanical security of the pouch in position or in the uh, in the packaging. So this uh, see this so see the pouches 
are basically they are uh, secured by aluminum plates and they also are insulated properly by the uh, uh, pu frame or the uh, plastic frame so it's a fire retardant plastic material pp uh, the aluminum serves two purpose one is it provides the proper mechanical security to individual cells now if you look at the individual cells uh, they have got very very it's a 40 micron kind of uh, uh, membrane film and then one has to be, be, do a very very well secured it from the edges from the corners so that it runs uh, it's it runs appropriately throughout the cycle life in the, as harsh environments as automotive as well right so this is a technology which we have been developing for uh, nearly three years lot of molds done undone modified and come to this so so, so this now this stack of, it, it does two things one mechanical security to the pouch putting it in uh, place securely throughout the cycle life as well as uh, taking the energy from the surface of the pouch to the outside thermal energy thermal energy. so uh, the temperatures are well uh, controlled we can say and then this energy can further be transferred to the outer media uh, like uh, you see the pack being done for two wheelers they don't need that much uh, rigorous uh, energy energy to be dissipated so a simple aluminium enclosure with a uh, natural convection does the job however for high and high power applications one can design uh, the heat sinks around this or even those heat sinks can be air cooled or those heat sinks even can be water cooled to have a complete water cooling to the system but the basic uh, uh, basic integration is uh, agnostic to the uh, uh, heat management system around that okay and then they are well secured from top and bottom uh, with uh, proper pressure being exerted so that the life of the pouch is uh, quite elongated as much as possible to the uh, theoretical value so these cells are connected in series okay and then a pcb we just put it because it's easy for integration for man for manufacturing purpose so all the cell level measurements can be taken out from these connectors to the bms and all uh, individual cell is protected with the fuse so any uh, issue during uh, manufacturing as well as uh, in service uh, the cells are well protected so now when we talk of, uh, optimizing the life of the cells we have to do two things so it's basically multiple cells in series so it's basically uh, follow the chain principle and what chain principle says that the weakest link in the chain defines the strength of the chain so to have the optimum uh, performance of the battery pack as well as the longer life all the weak links or all the links in the chain should be maintained at same level or at equality and that's more important so what will uh, make the uh, link unequal so let's ask different question okay so there are two things one is the temperature of operating temperature and second is the uh, uniformity of connection now that is the discriminating factor between handling the pouch and handling the cylindrical cells okay now for having the thermal uniformity same right uh, we uh, have multiple temperature sensors and we ensure that uh, uh, the uh, thermal management is such that the temperature across this temperature sensors is always uniform or plus minus 3 4 degrees where the calendar life is not too much deviated for individual cells that's uh, one uh, about uh, the uh, mechanical interconnections it's being a single it's very easy for pouch now you look at uh, a very similar example of uh, the cylindrical batteries where is for a, creating a 30 ampere hour kind of uh, 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 yeah, one has to do at least 10 cells in parallel and then 10 cells in parallel stacked together and then the one cell is to be connected to the next group such kind of it goes so it's not necessary or it's impossible that the connection which each cell sees would be same so there would be a differential uh, connection lengths definitely each cell is going to see and that would impact on to the ocv and the internals of the cell to become or to get deviated from equality so we always so that's uh, has to be that becomes a more of a engineering challenge or more complex engineering challenge when we handle uh, the uh, cylindrical cells to that level so aveji what we are seeing over here is something which fits on top of this and i can see one two three four uh, pcbs can you tell us uh, what each of these is doing so this battery pack has got four temperature sensors 
okay, uh, three on the tabs, one at positive, negative center, and even in the core of the uh, cell as well. So physically, we measure the temperatures even at the core, and all these temperatures then are correlated and uh, ensure to find out the diagnostic, uh, like what uh, if there is any performance deviation of any of the cells, kind of thing. So. To, to be frank, it's like uh, battery is the only where I always say that uh, the, your igniter and the fuel are packed together. Any <laughs> only other example what you see is the ammunition kind of thing. So one has to be very uh, cognizant about the uh, potential safety or potential energy which is there in the battery pack and the uh, uh, safety of it. And that can be achieved only by close monitoring. So if you see all this, uh, it's basically an intelligent BMS. A smart BMS completely homegrown. Uh, it, 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 it has got all the features like cell level measurements, uh, multiple temperature measurements, correlation algorithms, uh, even cell balancing and all. And then the actual uh, uh, SOC computations and all is followed by the uh, telematics. So this completely connected to the cloud. So all the data is available uh, at the cloud uh, for any diagnostic as well as the prognostic kind of uh, analysis. And then this is a MOSFET board with all the temperature sensors and all, so that uh, this is capable of uh, uh, delivering um, uh, no typical usage for the two-wheeler kind of applications uh, and has a complete control to connect or disconnect the battery in the event the BMS senses different than what it intends to be happening. Okay? So basically you are protecting the battery. Exactly like some alien charger is connected to the BMS then it will not, shut, it will completely shut it off of those kind of features and then also this is an inline connector uh, which is completely uh, waterproof connector uh, with multiple insertion cycles uh, well secured with two, uh, multiple power connections as well as the control connections okay which is very very uh, this is very important aspect of handling the battery pack okay because uh, most of the battery packs we see today are having only two connections and there is no controls or there is no communication any control from outside or any indication from inside that something bad is happening. So that's not uh, possible with the external vehicle front. So, uh, so this is uh, a very peculiar what we have been using as well. And then uh, we use LFP cells. So it's most of a flat characteristic and also for uh, genuinity of the fuel gauge or the capacity estimation of the battery, uh, capacity understanding of the battery pack, uh, it has to be an actual coulomb counting number which is properly adjusted for the environment. So this is basically indicates in numerics the actual SOC which is there into the battery at that particular time. So uh, some of our viewers, uh, Abhay may not know coulomb counting versus voltage. So if you could again put that in a layman's language, what exactly is that? So they'll probably understand the significance of uh, finding out what is the state of charge. So can you just elaborate a little bit on that? So I think that's a good question because SOC is a pretty abstractive term. Okay. Uh, even SOH kind of, these are very abstractive. But then I always give a reference to of a, a glass full with water. Okay. So it is something which is stored. So a glass full with water, by looking at outside itself, you can see it's full, fully uh, occupied, 50% occupied. So we always talk of percentage. We don't know what the capacity of the glass, whether it's 100 ml, 200 ml, 500 ml. What we always say is, oh, glass is 50% fill, or water is 50% fill, or it's 20, or it's almost empty. It's a very similar situation. Right. Okay. So what is that glass? It's some material which is going in and out, or water being water. poured outside the glass or being filled into the glass very similar transaction happens in the battery. So battery is a glass. What it stores? It stores coulombs or the charge. So charge is put from outside inside into or a charge is uh, pushed from inside to out. All that transaction happens. And what by looking at the outside, we should understand where this glass is filled. And that's exactly the SOC in that way. Now actually, it is the quantum of charge which is available into the battery at that time. It's a simple engineering or physics uh, definition. How would you do that? Because you cannot count. Ultimately, you have to count what is going inside and outside. So you have to have a computation engine and a lot of other things. So that's where some abstractive or indirect methodologies also have come in. Uh, like for example, NMC batteries will show a very linear characteristic between the voltage and the uh, SOC or the charge which is left into the battery. Uh, so just by having the measurement of the voltage, one can have a good estimation or a rough estimation of what is there into the glass. 
okay but that's only a indicative estimation if that has to be used for the end application for to compute some uh, uh, critical parameters and all i think that's something which will mislead us and would result into some advert, uh, adverse or inadvertent uh, feedbacks or behavior of the system if the algorithms are based on that kind of thing. right so abhay thanks for taking us across through your labor of love for the last 3 years right so we see that there's a fairly complicated uh, engineering that has gone into it and uh, next video uh, let's go and see how exactly does this get put together let's go to the factory the line that we are seeing behind and we'll take you through the details of that jaiye mat kahin pe